Hello friends, followers and channel members, welcome to another video here in Microsoft Flight Simulator in the Fly-by-Wire A32NX. In this video today, we're going to be looking at how we can use the custom waypoints feature to tell our aircraft how to fly a DME arc on the approach. Now, some of these approaches you will have seen in uh, my live streams and in your general day-to-day -day flying, if using Navigraph charts, you'll have seen that DME arcs are uh, a standard procedure used all over the world for arrivals into, uh, into airports. At the time of filming this video, however, DME arcs are not available and programmed into the uh, into the fly-by-wire aircraft. So we've had to fly these manually until the uh, the new feature of the custom waypoints, recently released by the fly-by-wire team, uh, came into play in the aircraft. We're going to in this video show you how you can program the uh, flight management guidance computer and add these custom waypoints in to fly the DME arc using the autopilot automation to use and utilize so you can concentrate on other things rather than having to ensure that you are flying the perfect 50 mile DME arc. Let's get into the flight deck and, uh, and take a look. So here we are in the flight deck and in this first example we're going to be departing Manchester and coming in for an arrival on runway 28 at Rennes in France. We are going to approach using the Sampo waypoint and as we can see from the chart here we've got a 50 mile DME arc which is all based off the, uh, the Rennes VOR uh, which is located close to the airfield. What we're going to do is have a look at how this approach looks already in the, uh, in the flight plan page now that's already been loaded into Simreef prior to me uh, starting this uh, this video and then we're going to build up a DME arc so we get a nice intersection making sure that we follow the uh, the required path so let me just move that aside and in order to uh, in order to show that on the navigation display we're going to flip this to the plan page we'll just zoom out a little bit as well and then in order to uh, follow that through, uh, you can see I've already got this set up, but you would use the up and down arrows to uh, scroll your way entirely through the flight plan, so all the way out of Manchester there, going down, 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 now there's our entire routing, checking everything looks good, uh, and there it is. So there is Sampo, and we then want to uh, intercept and come around a DME arc, which will then line us up nicely with Gomda according to uh, to the chart. So let's go ahead and utilize the uh, wonderful coding that the fly-by-wire team have done in order to make this work. Now when the uh, the fly-by-wire team have got all of their LNAV working properly we won't need to do this. This is just a video showing you a workaround on how you can program uh, a sort of manual DME arc if um, if you like until that works normally the aircraft once you select this approach would automatically have this already coded in to the uh, to the FMGC just because uh, it's in the navigation database but for now we're going to do this uh, we're going to do this manually so the first thing to note is that all of this is based off the uh, the Renz VOR and you can see that it is a 15 mile arc from Rens Viewer and it begins on a uh, radial of 064 and that you can see is just here. After we leave Sampo then, we want to continue on a radial on the radial of 064 until we reach 15 miles. So that is what we're going to put in there to begin with. Now place bearing distance is what we're going to use to get this uh, to get this in. So we are going to type in the place, so we're basing off the Rens VOR. R E N. The bearing is 064 and the distance is 15 miles. Now we have to be very careful now where we actually place this. We want that after Sampo. So we can see Sampo is there. The easiest way to think about this is put it where you want it. So we want it just here after Sampo. So let's go ahead and pop that in. And if it won't go in there because it's actually showing D cell, just move to the next one. There we go. And there's our place bearing distance 01 showing. So let's just come up to the navigation display. There it is. 
All right, so the next thing we want to do, we'll see this line join up momentarily. The next thing we want to do is add another place bearing distance, but this time we're going to add 10 degrees to it, so 0, 7, 4. Obviously, if we were going the other way, we'd take 10 degrees off it, so it would be 0, 5, 4 if we were going this way, but 0, 7, 4, but still at 50 miles. So let's uh, pop that next one in, so it's still going to be... Uh, R E N zero seven four and fifteen miles. Again, that would come in just here, but we can't pop that in the D cell area, so we want it just there before Gonda. There it is. Let's have a quick look now. There we can see that. Okay, next. Let's add uh, the next one, so it'll be zero eight four, and you can see the pattern that we're just building up here. So. I probably won't go ahead and pop every single one of those in, or certainly I'll skip the video forward so you don't have to watch, but R E N zero eight four at 15. Again, that wants to go just here. We can't pop that there because of the D cell, so we're going to put it here instead. There it is. And you can see that a sort of manual DME arc is being built up, and we're just going to keep going around until we can add this uh, this final one, which to be fair, the last waypoint that I put in, which was 084, I could have put in then 089, just because that's the point where we want to start the right hand turn to link up with Gonda. So, if need be, what I can do if I need to is just uh, go back to the place bearing distance 03, the last one I put in, clear that out, and then just add in uh, just add in another one at the 089 radial, just because it's close to the last one. But I'm happy to leave that for now, it's uh, not a million miles away. Uh, the next thing then is just to see how that's now looking. There we go, you can see that after uh, a minute or so, the uh, the flight computer has computed and added this in, so you can see the path that it is uh, that it's going to draw, and that's just nice because previous to the uh, this function and uh, custom waypoints being added in by the fly by wire team, we would have had to have done this uh, DME arc and flown it manually using the uh, Rose VOR mode. Well, now we don't have to. Now we can leave the aircraft in nav mode throughout this, and we can just concentrate on other things. So we're using the automation. Let's have a look at another example at uh, adding a DME arc in. So in this example, we're going to fly from Porto to Nantes, and we're going to come in via the Laroc waypoint as shown down here. In real life, this flight most likely would come in via Normie, but I think we can get a few more extra uh, pieces of information here. So just for this example, we're going to go uh, going to go the long way around. So we're going to just check out what the flight plan looks like. It should have us, if I've done this correctly, set up via Laroc and then pointing somewhere towards uh, Nantes direct, and we're going to fill in the uh, fill in the blanks. So Let's take a look. We're going to go to the plan page, just zoom out a little bit there. And there we can see, actually, that it's got the Laroc waypoint in here. And then it's got the uh, distance of uh, 16.5 just here. And if I have a look on the, uh, on the charts, let me just get a good position so we can uh, compare that. There it is. That is the point in which it wants to begin the DME arc. Now of course Flyby Wire haven't yet coded this in so it doesn't look quite right. We're going to go in and put this in just as we did in the previous example. So all based off the uh, the Nantes VOR, a 15 mile DME arc. So the first one is shown just, uh, the first point is just here. We're going inbound 3, 4, 5 degrees, while the reciprocal of that is 1, 6, 5, which would be uh, outbound from Nantes, 1, 6, 5 heading this way. So we're coming to add another one just here, so instead of 1, 6, 5, we're going to add one at 1, 7, 5. So we're just adding 10 degrees each time to that. So let me pop NTS. And then the bearing, 175, and the distance, 15, and we want that to be just after this uh, 
first distance here where the turn begins which is 60.8 miles from Nantes so let's go ahead and pop that in we should be able to put it in just after that there it is place bearing distance 04 you'll notice this time it's labeled it as place bearing distance 04 because I had custom waypoints 1 2 and 3 already from the previous example that I just shown you let's go ahead and check that that's been added in the correct place there it is so let's now go and add another one in 15 miles away but another 10 degrees further in and that's going to be 185 so again NTS oh, 185 15 miles and that's coming we want it just here check what that looks like there we go and if we just zoom in a little more and scroll down so we can see that pattern building up there it is okay let's add one more so that would be 195 but just before we do that let's just check oh, so 195 or let's just go straight ahead and put in the, uh, the turn turning point which is actually on a radial of 202 let's go ahead and add that then which is 202 from Nantes and T S 202 50 miles and now that is looking really rather good there is a nice manually placed DME arc which is going to get us on the intercept nicely for the ILS now of course I wouldn't sit here and do this on the ground prior to departure this is the kind of thing that I would be uh, doing during the cruise once we've reached the top of climb done all the top of climb checks uh, before starting the approach briefing I go ahead add all these points in and you can see that if you're only doing an hour's flight there's actually not really much time to sit back and, uh, and relax which is uh, which is nice it's good to be kept busy particularly when we've got Vatsim online as well with ATC controlling us but that looks really nice and hopefully that's given you a good um, a good tutorial on how to uh, program in these DME arcs until of course the fly by wire team get uh, get those working automatically Finally then, before I go, I'm going to show you how to add a custom waypoint which is used in the real world by pilots who fly routes over the Alps. And this is used in uh, the event of a decompression, and it's basically to enhance our situational awareness. So here we are sat at the gate at Amsterdam Schiphol Airport and we're going to head from Amsterdam down to Milan in Italy. Of course this means that we are going to fly over the Alps. Now the Alps of course as we all know very high above 10,000 feet we can have a, a bit of a problem should we have a rapid decompression and need to get our aircraft safely down. So as a quick point of reference the pilots have a particular waypoint with radials from that waypoint a sort of north-south divide and if you uh, have a decompression and you haven't quite reached this line then you need to turn around and go back if you have reached that line and you've flown over it then you continue and you can start to uh, start your descent it's just a uh, situational awareness thing and it's a waypoint which pilots can use but it's not one that is included by default in uh, in the navigation database it's one that is usually added uh, by the pilots themselves so we're going to go ahead and add that in and once we've done this it's going to be stored for all future flights so let me just go ahead and show you what that is and how to store it so we need to go to our data page onto page 2 and to the stored waypoints you can see from the previous examples that I've been doing in this video you can see all of those are, uh, are still there we're going to go ahead and add this new waypoint now this new waypoint is called alpha Lima Papa Delta Delta let's go ahead and put that in and it is a set of coordinates it's just a point in uh, a point in space um, and the coordinates for that is 4630 north I need to remember to pop the decimal point in there point zero otherwise it doesn't work and slash zero zero eight three zero oh hang on I've just missed a zero out of that let's go back zero zero eight 
three zero point zero again remembering the decimal point afterwards and that is east so if we pop that in we can now store that waypoint so let's go ahead and click that that is now stored this means then that when I go to the fixes page I can now pop that point in Alpha Lima Papa Delta Delta and it should recognize it because we've just created it there it is and we're going to put a, a couple of radials out of there and the magic numbers are 225 and another one 090 and this is essentially sort of like the the midpoint the highest point of the Alps not exactly the highest point of course that has its own waypoint but this is a reference for which pilots can use if they have a rapid decompression just to let them know do they continue or do they turn around and go back if I now go to the plan mode and zoom out we may be able to zoom out just far enough to see that and if not ah no not quite let's go back into um, in fact, let's just go back to plan mode, leave it there, to the flight plan page, and scroll through, and it should. There it is. So, if we were flying uh, on our on our way, headed down south, and we had a decompression here over the Alps, then we would spin the aircraft back around and head down. If we had the decompression here over the Alps, we would continue. And it's just a little, uh, a little very quick guidance that pilots have got on the navigation display to let them know. And of course, you can see that these are now infinite lines. Whenever you're flying over the Alps, very, very useful for situational awareness. And one that you will now, we've got this programmed in, see me use whenever I'm flying over the Alps. So hopefully that has given you a little bit of extra knowledge and detail in creating these DME arcs in the FMGC so that you can leave your aircraft in nav mode and the aircraft will fly them automatically until a such point that the fly-by-wire team get those working uh, as they should in the real aircraft and also a little bit of uh, extra context with regards to flying over the Alps. There are stages of that which I know may be a little confusing first time you watch it through. So if you do have any questions, then please do leave a comment down below and I'll come back and help you out as best I can. Thank you so much for watching. If you've liked this video, please do hit the like button. And if you are new to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe. Turn on that notifications bell so you don't miss any future videos and live streams. I look forward to seeing you on the next flight. Thanks very much for watching. Bye bye for now.